Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy back again with another installment of the mini series. <sighs> In today's episode, I will be replacing the clutch and dual mass flywheel on the R56 Mini sitting behind me. It also has an N14 engine if that is important to you. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is you will see at the beginning of this video or where this video comes in that the engine and transmission have already been removed from the Mini. You do not have to remove the engine and transmission from the Mini in order to replace the clutch and flywheel. You can actually leave the engine inside the vehicle. There is a way to do that. However, you will need a brace or some means of supporting the engine. Uh, I say from up top with like a little hook that goes between the strut towers in order to do this job. If not, if you're trying to do it with a floor jack from underneath, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult because you're going to need to work around that floor jack in order to get to a lot of these fasteners. But with the engine and transmission removed, it makes it easier for me to show you stuff. Also, I had other work to do. I just figured I'd take it out. But I have done a video about that, which you should watch uh, because that will show you how to remove the axles, how to drain the transmission, and how to get to this point of removing the transmission from the engine, which we will start with right now. First step to get the transmission off is to remove the starter. It looks like there's a few of these e-torques and uh, what looks like maybe 13. Okay, these e-torques are E10s. It looks like just these other two here. You. There's a bit of clutch dust there. Like there's one here and one over here. And there's two here at the top of the bell housing. And then there's these two. And these are E12s. Okay, I'm gonna save an easy one for last that's up high because I'm gonna put this on the ground when I dismount it from the engine. It's like we gotta knock them all loose. That one is longer, so the tops are short, these are longer. You can almost see by the thickness of the bell housing. Let's let it down and unmount this transmission. Still want to keep a little tension on it because I, I don't want it to roll away on me or I don't want it to fall on me. That's maybe what I'm trying to say. Sometimes there's just a little area that you can sneak into. Maybe that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. This is a heavy transmission. Uh, this looks like the E10. That doesn't inspire much confidence. I know it's dual mass and I've dealt with dual, dual mass in the past, but I don't remember it wobbling around like that. What is a dual mass flywheel? Well, all clutches when you apply them need some sort of dampening. And what they normally do with many clutch discs is you'll see a spring or a series of springs inside this area here. And that's whenever you apply the clutch, it gives it some dampening force. That is heated up. I'm very glad I pulled this engine and I'm glad I pulled this clutch because it's toast. Okay, so as I was saying, in quote unquote normal uh, clutch disc, what you'll see is a series of springs uh, around the circumference of this inner circle here because it's actually a sandwich. And I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video I did about clutches. And in fact, I believe I covered dual mass flywheels in that also. Uh, but this one is more, well, uh, of a solid piece. In other words, it's all put together to be one piece. Uh, but the other ones with the springs on the inside are designed to have two pieces so that they can dampen every time you apply the clutch or every time you release the clutch and it puts power to the transmission. Now with a dual mass setup, what happens with that is instead of the dampening being done by the clutch disc, it's actually done by the flywheel assembly. So you can kind of see here 
to where there's two parts to this flywheel and there's a dampening mechanism within it uh, that does the same thing. So you can either do it with the flywheel or you can do it with the clutch disc. It just depends on what the engineers decide to do with that particular vehicle. I think I can get a better angle with this wood block. Do a little house cleaning. I've got my pan down here to catch stuff. Now there is one thing that could potentially slow me down at this point. I did not get a rear main seal. Maybe I should have. If it's not leaking, I'm not going to bother with it. If it is leaking, then yes, I will bother with it. It's only so far that I go with cleaning the inside of these things out. I don't try to get it back to the point of factory, but I do like to get the majority of the goo out. Like to me, that seems good. No point in wasting any more brake clean. Let's uh, get the lever out. Maybe I'll just do that. There's just this spring and it fit down over like that and then came down through the hole. This is the pivot where the uh, slave cylinder comes in. And this is obviously the pivot that goes up here on this ball. It's smaller than this, but I may have to use it. This E10 is the smallest one I have. Maybe it's an E9 or E8, but I'll use hand tools. That way I help ensure that I don't completely screw it up. That'll work. The seal looks good. I don't see any oil or anything coming out of it. I got one, might as well replace it, right? One thing I do want to keep clean, and that's the input shaft. Hope there's something to center this, or else it's what, gonna wear into place? Yeah, there's these little indentations that seem to put it where it's supposed to, be, supposed to be. This is not a place that I feel requires a ton of torque. Just not to fasten it so it doesn't come loose, that's it. Now we've got our throw out bearing. Before I install that, well, I'm gonna use this uh, high temp urea grease from Honda that I've used on clutches for a long time. And where I'm gonna apply it in sparse amounts. You have to keep in mind here, any lubrication that you put into this area is going to get covered with dirt and clutch dust. It's just, it's going to be a place for it to collect. So you have to just use the stuff sparingly, whatever you do use. I've used uh, lithium grease for this also. Something high temp is what I'm suggesting. So a little bit on here. Also, I'm going to coat the splines of the input shaft. This helps the clutch work easier but too much and you can actually saturate the clutch once this stuff starts to get warm. It can sling out and get on your clutch and you don't want grease on your clutch. And that's about all I have to say about that. I'm gonna take some anti-seize and put that on the pivot ball. That's my lubricant of choice for here. Seems to stick around and keep down the noise. I was gonna put a little bit on the nose of the slave cylinder so that as the slave cylinder worked, it also had a little bit of lubrication. So we're not reusing this throw out bearing so we can discard it. And this is already making noise. You should always replace a throw out bearing every time you do a clutch. I'm glad to see that the kit at least came with that. I guess I'm gonna to try to clip this in. There we are, just sort of clipped into place. Just going to put my spring back on so it went around like this, came through there, so that it should push right onto that ball now. Done. Except, I'm going to put grease in one last spot, and once again sparingly. Where the uh, throw out bearing touches the uh, pressure plate fingers, I like to put a little grease here too. Once again, not a lot. A barely perceptible amount, but that's it right there. These fasteners are T55, and I'm just gonna knock them all loose with my half inch breaker bar. A 
Looks like there was some Loctite on these. I'm gonna have to look up to see if that's procedure. I don't mind putting a little bit on mine. It's gonna be like that. Oh, you are heavy. Let's get a closer look at our rear main seal. This is our reluctor wheel. I want to make sure that that doesn't get hurt in any way. You know, I don't see anything on the rear main that says, ah, you got to replace this. I don't see any dampness or anything around it. I'm going to let it ride, but I am going to clean it. Got my pan underneath and we'll get rid of some of this goo. I'm going to put this reluctor wheel back on. I can't stress enough how important this thing is and how important the little gaps and everything between each and every single one of these little things is. Don't drop this, don't anything, just be as gentle with this as possible because not only is this important, but the air gap between it and its sensor, super flipping important. Now I'm going to go clean the bolts up real quick so I can install a new Loctite. Check out what I found with my new $1,300 uh, fly, well, my $1,300 clutch came with a flywheel, but uh, it also came with new fasteners that already have the proper amount of Loctite on them. So I'm gonna use these new fasteners. When I install this new flywheel, I wanna make sure that the opening for the uh, tool to go into, which I believe is right there. I want to make sure that guy's at six o'clock uh, so that everything, when it's in time, goes in time. There's also a little locating pin here that's going to go in, so you're only going to be able to install it one way, it looks like. Not until I'm sure several threads are engaged do I even let go of that thing. I want to run these all down evenly and I'm using the hand tighten feature on this impact so it's not it's not gonna over torque them and I'm doing these in a star pattern just like you would a wheel there was evidence that when the last time it got put on there that there were little strands of metal that looked like it was not cared for as well as it could have been See if my tool goes in. Went right in. So this will help hold it while I tighten stuff. The sequence is eight Newton meters, 30 Newton meters, then 90 degrees. The lowest my torque wrench goes is 30 Newton meters. I can't do eight. I'm gonna say that what I just did is eight Newton meters as far as running it down. I think what they're really trying to stress here is that they want it all to go down evenly. So in other words, they don't want you to like run one fastener down and cock it to one side and try to do the other because that can damage the end of the crank here. So I'm just gonna go to 30 all the way around, then do the 90 degrees. Or maybe I'll just snug them all up first and then try to go to 30. Let's get past that initial, you know, that one's 30 right there. going to check them all now and I do that in sequence just to make sure I didn't miss any and we're in now we got to do that 90 degrees this is a degree um, angle gauge that you can use to figure out 90 degrees I'm gonna assume that you don't have one of these maybe you could borrow one from an auto parts store or something like that but we're not talking like a 60 degree which is a tough thing to do we're talking about 90 degrees which is easy to judge, at least in my opinion. Therefore, I'm just gonna take my half inch breaker bar and do this at 90 degrees. So I'm right here, and this is how I do these, is I just sort of gauge it. So I'm gonna be right about down there. Wow, maybe I should have. Okay. So 90 degrees from this will be down here somewhere. Uh, 
I think it's that extra 90 degrees that really does it because that, that got rough. Flywheel's installed. This little tool, super handy. Before I go to install the clutch, they often put rust inhibitor on these. So I'm just gonna hit it with some brake clean and a clean rag to uh, remove any rust inhibitor that might be here. All right, and that's special. All of this, I might have mentioned, my clutch disc, throw out bearing, all of that and the flywheel came to a total of 1300 bucks. I got that from Detroit Tuned. Honestly, I think it's an excellent kit with the exception of there's no stinking clutch alignment tool. So in all this, for all this money, there's no clutch alignment tool. I've never bought a clutch that did not come with a clutch alignment tool. That said, I have a bunch of clutch alignment tools that I'm gonna go through here and see if I can find one that fits. To save you some money, rather than going that route and buying everything in a kit, which I'm not opposed to, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, you might want to consider, you can purchase this flywheel for about 500 some dollars. And that's the dual mass flywheel. I looked into the possibility of changing this over to a solid flywheel and a regular clutch. Apparently on this generation, Gen 1s you can do that, but apparently on Gen 2s, Gen 2s which is what this is, that's not a possibility. And that's what the guy from uh, Detroit Tune told me. That said, you can purchase this for about 500 bucks, 500 and some change. And you can get the clutch, this exact same Vallejo clutch, for about $350. So you're saving yourself a good amount of money by purchasing seeing these things separately. I'll put links in the description so you can do that. You can also do all this work inside the car, but I just found it easier since I was also doing a timing chain just to take the engine transmission out and do what I'm doing. I don't regret it one bit. Now it's time to see if I can find one of these to match up. I did not find an exact match and I didn't expect to, but I've found something pretty darn close. And this is a Nissan number 68. That's what I ended up finding. Now it doesn't spline up, but it fits in here kind of snug. But more importantly, it fits into the back of the crankshaft perfectly, which is the really important part. So this will help center this. So this will keep this pretty darn close. I don't think it's gonna be exactly perfect, but I think it'll be good enough. You might be able to see that says gearbox side there. So the nose actually faces in toward uh, the engine, which is uncommon, but I'm just gonna take this and put it in there like that. Like I said, that seems to center it up pretty darn good. Now with the pressure plate, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna clean this with some brake clean and a rag, just like I did the flywheel because this would also have some rust inhibiting stuff on it. That looks pretty good there. And these fasteners are T10s. I'm not running these down at all yet. My trick with clutches just in general is to wiggle this around while you tighten these up. But these already seem to be to the point where they're gripping. So I'm just gonna give these a little half turn out. I want to be sure that this can wiggle and I want to be sure that once I get it done, see it's, it's hanging down a little bit here, but I want to just try to center it up perfectly. If you have a proper clutch tool, I would still be performing the same procedure, but the takeaway here is that you just want to be sure that this thing is centered and I usually keep wiggling it in order to do that. That's the other thing I do is I'll take this, I'll insert it, and pull it back out. And if it does this readily easily, then I'm happy. If it doesn't, I keep trying until it does. Because you gotta think of the input shaft going in here. The whole reason why you're doing this is so that when you mate the engine and transmission up, they go together. If the clutch disc is off, then when the input shaft tries to pass through it and into the back of the crankshaft, it's not gonna be able to do that successfully because it's gonna keep hitting the outside of the crankshaft. So clutch alignment is super important for that very reason. It's basically to make reassembly easier. And I'm not gonna to claim to be a mini expert at all. I've just done a lot of clutches. Once again, keep alternating like you're putting on a wheel. You know, an old input shaft from a transmission can also be a great clutch alignment tool. In fact, that's what a clutch tool is, is basically it's a mock input shaft. Now this one I didn't notice any bearing or anything in the back of the crankshaft that supports the front of the transmission. I guess it's done differently on this model or just the setup has, doesn't require it. But if you do have a bearing or something in there, it's 
good idea to replace it. Sometimes there's bushings also. I'm gonna to torque all these to uh, 30 newton meters. I think the most important thing is that they are all torqued the same. And it's moving because it's dual mass. So it's not the flywheel moving necessarily, it's the inner part of the flywheel that is supposed to move that's moving. Should all be torqued down and this thing should like slide in and out like butter. And it does. No need for this tool anymore. So I'm taking that out too. I'm gonna see if I can do this table mounting. Maybe that's what we'll call it. We'll call it table mounting. Bench mounting. That seems to have gone together quite nicely. I'm not gonna run these all the way down. Just gonna get them in part way, use them as guides. I wanna make sure I've got good thread engagement and then I'm not cross-threading anything. Once it starts to make contact with the dowels, you're pretty much home free. Here's a more detailed look at what I've got going on. So I just started one bolt. I got the input shaft started, started one bolt, got it going and then I've just inserted other bolts as guides and then I will slowly go around and snug these up so this is the other one I did here the ones underneath I'm not as concerned about uh, the two short bolts go up through the top up there but just slowly draw it together don't like hammer it down with an impact or anything like that uh, I don't think that's a good practice and these are E12s if I haven't mentioned that already and if anyone doesn't feel like they're going in well, stop. Readjust, reassess, and see what you got. But don't try to force it, just bring it together. Like I said, once it's on the dowels, those, those little things that stick out from the back of the engine that go into the transmission, once you're on those, you're good. And seeing how easily this is going together, I feel like I nailed it. Now let's get it off of here. We are officially one. I say it is so much easier to do this out of the vehicle. We're in a good place. Whoa, whoa, Eric, you're not done. There's still more stuff to do. And you are correct. <laughs> I need to put the engine and transmission back in this vehicle and I will be covering that in other videos. In fact, I'll put a link to that when it becomes available along with other videos in the mini series that are available right now if you wanna go see those. But there is a few more things that you will need to do uh, if you're doing this job. And one of those things is you need to fill the transmission back up with fluid. And I used this fluid. It took two quarts, um, well, not quite two quarts. There's probably about this much left in this bottle and trust me this stuff is also expensive like everything else with the mini now as mentioned during the video that you you don't necessarily have to go with the $1,300 kit from Detroit tune which is linked down in the description uh, you can buy just the dual mass flywheel and the clutch kit separately and that can come in a, a little bit less than that but it doesn't come with all those extras so you're gonna have to weigh out and figure out what's right for you uh, and how you want to go about your repair or your clutch replacement on your mini once again links down in the description to additional videos additional information also tools parts other information got questions check the description if you have automotive questions not covered in this video i ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com that will also be linked in the description be safe have fun stay dirty i really want to thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe comment all that kind of stuff i'll see you next time